So, ladies and gentlemen, I know your time is very precious, uh, but I have been given the chance to share what I'm doing with you, uh, you guys to make sure that we see we are aligned. The energy. Energy, I hope the clicker is working. Which direction should I press? So, however, the energy issue is relevant. And construction, architecture, are the most area where energy is the most needed, uh, consumed, be it for the making as well uh, for the running. Um, and I came from a place like this. Um, and as you can imagine, access to energy was uh, not existing, not part of it. Uh, what I have in mind was to create um, housing, buildings, but to make sure that this building will provide comfort to the community. From that, ladies and gentlemen, I sat in the class or in the building like what you can see. And can you imagine how high the temperature inside was while you had abundant light outside, it was dark inside. And uh, benches were not comfortable at all. And as a kid, I thought to myself, if you become an adult, you're going to change the way it is. And so, that is what is built in Burkina Faso. Architecture has been considered as something corporate, too big, that no one can understand. Uh, but that is the reality. People build with clay. Clay buildings has an advantage. You could just use it very easily, but it gets also easily destroyed. You could reuse the material to build. So I told myself, I want to give to my people a school. I want to build a school. And I was still a student in Berlin. So I went back home. I told to my people, OK, the Western world is great. They have glass palaces. They have everything. But if you want to succeed, we have to build using clay, what we had the most available. And so I happened to mobilize everyone. If later you want, I will tell you the secret. It's look easy, because I want to make fast and not to take a lot of your time. What well, looked easy was not easy, but we made it. So we took the clay, we changed the configuration, adding a little bit of cement to create bricks. And with these bricks, I built this school as a student, completely out of clay from the village, using rebars to make a roof. You know, young people in Africa are so creative, so talented. What is missing most of the time are opportunities. And I had the opportunity to study in Germany, so I could create a class like this with the community, with my community. And you could see what I found and what I was able to create. And that is it, making simple plan. Because the key was, how do you explain drawing to people who are neither able to read nor write? And so I make simple plans. And here, already the extension building, you could see what we did. We will make a form. And then we will build, and I will jump on the top of the, 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 the form to show, look, it's working, to get my people understand engineering and techniques. The one with the cap is me. What you don't see is the other one with the red cap. Behind him, a crowd of people are, tending to, to, are standing, waiting to check the construction. Um, luckily, until now, it was great. We were able to produce, and that is already the extension, using clay locally available clay and the community power to build. And so I will want to tell you our building are so cool that even animals like this donkey here love it. They will come to benefit from the freshness coming from the buildings. And that is the buildings inside. No need for air condition. No need for extra energy made by fossil energy sources. And so Honestly, standing in front of you guys, you belong to you know, the forefront, the maker of our world tomorrow. Me standing in front of you, I will tell you, if I go back to Gando, I see this happiness, these faces. You know, then I know I did my job. And it kept giving me energy to do. And then we keep saying, OK, we need a library. How do you build a library? But we have no other alternative. But here is one alternative, clay pots. I will measure. We cut them, and then we use them to make a roof, a ceiling, to allow ventilation to happen inside. And so looking what is available, how can I use it differently
to create spaces that are breathing for my people. You know, even a little corner where the teacher can share a table is being built. Here is what I love, the community. You know, ladies that have not been to school will come and then will enjoy uh, learning to read and write. It's not just for the peoples. So with this work, people start to ask me, could you just do a project for ourselves? So I start to recruit a team of young people. Here is an example, Lise Schorge. Will will end up being an, like MIT, as you will see later. So the MIT of Burkina Faso is called BIT. So the US being always the Western world, I'm um, an example of us. So you guys, if you do it good, we're going to learn to do it uh, even better. So here is laterite, another material. That is how we extract it. And we get it. We make a cut. This material has been rejected by the people because it's not modern. Same way like, like clay. But with the cut, it becomes modern. Here, another resource that we have. Wood. Locally available wood. The women will come, be part of the construction. They will send this wood so good, so nicely, so smoothly. And we could introduce it in the building. And with the leftover, I will, with my team, create benches, as you will see. This way, we create. All what you see in this picture is being created on site. So, no need for extra engine, really with the power of the people and some good ideas. Here, my window. My window is my generator. My window is like this. I will push the teacher to convince the young kids to put the bucket after they had finished their lunch, and then put a little bit of water, and then with the heat, the heat coming in, through evaporation, I will cool down the buildings. And the kids could stay inside, sit, they don't know what is happening, but underneath of this fit, you know, we're generating energy. But it's not all what I do. I'm coming from the desert. In the desert, there is no plants. Every building comes with an idea, planting trees, for you to see how it comes. This is within eight years that we could create a building that become an oasis where we could educate the next generation. So the next generation will enjoy. You remember the wood, you remember the laterite, you remember the wooden for the benches, and so there is not a need. But in the inside also, we're planting trees. And again, you see how happy these kids are looking because we created a wonderful place for them to really learn, you know. And so more projects are coming, like the following, we created this high school on the same site. The client get excited and say, oh, now I want to build an MIT. I laughed. He wanted to start with one class. Like most of your guys, or our pioneer, like Bill, uh, Bill Gates, we heard that he started in the garage of his father. So this client wanted me to build just one classroom. I say, yes, Bill Gates is in the US, but I am in the desert. If I start with one classroom in the middle of the desert, it's going to be hot inside. It doesn't work. Let us have a plan, a much bigger plan. And so the sun is always my friend. It's a, let me call it a playboy. It is distracting if you are exposed to the sun. But how can we not use it? to suck the air out of the building. That's always things that I'm trying to do in my work. Here you have the building already done, um, and tr the tree growing, and then the courtyard is created to really allow kids to stay during the day. But the classrooms are cool. Another method, you see the wall, we didn't make bricks anymore, we are pouring clay. I'm not talking about ram earth. We are pouring clay like you will do the same with concrete to shape, you know, young people's dreams. And so, at night, you also have light. And if I'm looking back, I feel I have given a chance to bring light, to bring good infrastructure in the place of desperation. And this is my work to be saying. Here, the tool we use to plant the trees is a clay pot. With the clay pot, you put a little bit of water, a little hole on the knees, the water is drip, you know, running drop by drop onto the roots of the plant. Here, the plants are already growing up. 
and this pot is ready to be removed and to go to the next site. And the plots are made in Burkina. But to my surprise, in the Western world, that are considered as far to my reach as an access where I can get education and ideas, I start to be asked to contribute to element. And every time when I got the chance, I will go, I will look, and see how I can just you know, introduce ideas that I you know now on to myself. Here is a Toguna. I love this structure. It is completely made of locally available material, natural material, plants that you could plant again because they will grow. So with that, I went to Montana and my partner now, my friend, all my friends, just asked me to design a pavilion to contribute to their open air gallery, which is huge in Montana. And I saw these trees, I was inspired. So many wood, so much wood. And that wood, there's fire destroying everything. And to me, I said, wow, what a paradise. What do you do with this wood, guys? No, we don't use them. I'm going to use them. Even you, being in the US, the most powerful country on planet, I'm thinking that the US could go everywhere and get the energy. And because you are in Germany, <laughs> I will allow myself to say, if you don't give them that energy, they will come with aircraft. We will force you to give them that energy. So even a country like this must, must learn to save, must learn to look for alternative. So I took my courage to Berlin. I want to have all these wood that you don't need, you don't want. I want to have them on site. I got them, I designed, and then we put them together and we create a pavilion. And uh, if I see this, I become emotional. I arrived very naive, and we did it. It just then the weather, the monumentality of the landscape of Montana can be frustrating. And then that's what I have created. Of course, we need nails to put this together and engineering, but that's what you could do. If you look and look for alternative, and look for material, that doesn't cause a burden to the environment. So, these gentlemen, it is called to be a pavilion for concert and for people that came from a long hiking day to rest. And the young man resting is a friend of mine, the son of a friend of mine, if Ivan Ban, who took these pictures. And I love these pictures very well. And yet, there is no season where I don't get images from my friend Peter and Kathy the two gentlemen sitting to my left, that I will send me, Francis, we miss you here. We enjoyed a season of beautiful concert, and people love your pavilion, and wondering that is made simply out of wooden logs that we will otherwise throw away. This is so heartbreaking, but also good, and telling me every one of us can contribute to make sure that we will have still energy for the next generation to come. Here, another project. This time in London, I was called to design a serpentine pavilion. I didn't believe it, so I didn't take it seriously. Hmm, I left, I went to Burkina Faso, because this is where I needed the most. But then I got a call, it's your friend. He's insisting, he wants you to really do something for London. I say, okay, serpentine pavilion, what is that? Okay, so let's talk. They wanted to have a pavilion. Okay, I start to think about a big tree with a shadow where people can stay, can sit, and express themselves. And so I start to design and say, I'm going to design a big, big funnel in the uh, Kensington Gardens to collect water and to contribute to the growth of the existing park. Um, so with sketches, you start, you start, and then that is it. It's not a UFO. It's not a UFO. It's man-made, what you could see in front. So wood is abundant in Europe. You have to look how you find it. And wood is a good material. And wood, you could treat it. You could change the color to protect it. So you need metal. You don't need to have bulky section, so strong section. You could have very little section. 
That's what we do. And this is our pavilion. And this is so beautiful to see people leaning to enjoy themselves. In previous pavilion, you should not touch. Uh, say, I'm creating something for the people. They should touch. And so this is the pavilion. Even for the little ones, I will take the le leftover, glue it together to create a little slide, a little playground. And this is what you could do. Use what nature can give us and use what we human beings can grow afterward to create space. You know, people together, to stay together. But what is key to me is where I'm coming from. So this image is showing you where I'm from and what I'm trying to do to create space that are comfort comfortable or providing comfort to people to be educated, to gather together. And how I did it at the beginning, I started very naively because no one could do it. Remember, construction sector in Africa, when you see big things, you're thinking about big corporation. And they start to train young people. While talking to you, this group of young people that you see are busy in more than eight different construction sites around the continent while I'm here to talk. What I want to tell you, there's another problem that we see but we don't understand. Is these young people moving to come to your coast seeking for better life? My example may be seen as a little drop, a little drop of water in the ocean of sand. But, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you will understand this drop is so strong. I need brains like you guys to help scale it to the level of the continent. Thank you very much.